Hello and welcome by another video of the Orchid Saga. Today we're going to uh, talk about uh, this beauty here, the Engrae Combusterii, in a care collab. And before I'm going to talk about how I do give care to this beautiful orchid, let me introduce to you, if you didn't already know them, the other participants for this uh, care collab. Uh, at first we have, let me speak, plants and other things. Then we have Ed's Orchids, Orchids and Fiendboss, Karen's Orchids, Todd's Tropicals, Simply Orchids, etc. TD More Than Just Orchids, Fernanda Nascimento Orchids and Succulents, and last but not least, we have uh, Ninja Orchids, Nina from Ninja Orchids. So uh, those are. Uh, Putting out their care collab today as well, those beautiful growers. So I really encourage you guys to head over to their channels as well. I will have the links in the video description to make it a little bit easier. But um, yeah, this is my uh, Engraken Bosherii. So um, it sits here on the side uh, of my greenhouse where um, also my vendors are and my uh, Rinko Stylus, for example, my Tolomnia. So that's should say something already. Um, it, well, what I'm referring to is the light level. These, all these orchids uh, do like uh, quite uh, some light, so therefore they are uh, sitting at the section where um, I do get the most sunlight during the day. And the Agraica may may like a little bit less light than a Venda. I'm not completely sure about that, but I think it does. But I have it uh, next to my uh, Rinko stylus, uh, like I said, those are over here. So it uh, does get quite some light and it really enjoys it. And the leaves are not um, very light, they are not extremely dark. So if they were uh, uh, particularly light, they uh, this orchid would get a, a little bit too much light. If they were uh, way darker than this, fairly dark, it would didn't uh, get enough light. So that's uh, about the light levels. I am very um, into the self-watering, into growing in organic. So uh, I have this at least with a top layer of pebbles. And then I think we have some uh, pumice in there. I'm not remembering it correctly, but we will have a look in the pot. So we will uh, see what's in there. I am pretty sure it has some pumice in there. Maybe some uh, leftovers from Lekka, but I do not... I like the lacquer as much as the pumice, therefore I try to uh, uh, avoid using it. But in the early days I'd use some lacquer, so it might have some. But uh, like I said, a self-watering setup. If you're fairly new here, you may not know this, but I uh, do not flush my orchids uh, on a regular basis, as most of the orchid uh, growers do uh, when they grow in self-watering or semi-hydroponic. But I do it a little bit different. I have a video on uh, uh, on my customized cell watering setup, uh, like I uh, uh, like to call it. Uh, so if you want to know more about it, uh, you should uh, check that one out. But uh, what I notice is that over time, let's say about five, six months, if you don't flush the reservoir, the water in the, in the reservoir does get a quite a low pH, not a high pH, but a low pH. So therefore I check my orchids every three months uh, pH-wise and also parts per million. While I'm at uh, edit, I uh, check, uh, like I said, the pH, and I'm curious to see if they uh, start to eat or if they are uh, building uh, salts up in the pot. If they do that, they have a higher parts per million reading in, inside of that reservoir. So let's uh, demonstrate what I do and uh, go uh, a bit further into the subject uh, uh, into the greenhouse. I'm going to take this this uh, into the orchid room. I'm sorry. I'm going to take this uh, one into uh, the orchid room to my up potting table, and we will have a look at the reservoir. So we are now in uh, in the orchid room, where I have my up potting table. Here I do all my repottings, etc. For the guys who are new to my channel. Um, and also, uh, what I would like to mention is that for me, in my, uh, if you ask me in my opinion, this is a fairly slow grower. It's a uh, not that big orchid. It's growing well. It's really doing well for me. But I think this one is off-blooming for 
at least two years and probably three years, maybe even more. I don't know, but it will take a while for them to get them into a, a blooming, um, or get, yeah, when they have the ability to bloom. So you will see some blooming size ones as well in the care uh, collapse. So that's one of the things that I like about the care collapse. So you can see the difference there, but mine is fairly, uh, fairly um, small. And also before I bought this one, I did see back in the days a video from Ed's Arcades who has this one as well, who is also participating in this care collab as we just uh, this, did discuss. But uh, he also mentioned in that video that these do not like any root disturbance. So I was a little bit um, afraid when I uh, did get it, uh, to, uh, when I did put it up in a new situation, in a new self-watering setup. But I, it did do well. Let's take it out and let's have a look at the root system. It uh, did take off uh, right from the start. So that was a, a, a nice... Um, at least a nice moment to repot it. <laughs> That's what I was trying to refer to. And uh, like I said, we have still we have some lacquer in here as well. I didn't remember it from the top of my head, but I have some lacquer in here. Uh, but I have more pumice in it. Those lighter stones are the pumice stones. I do like uh, like them a bit better. And as you can see, we have quite some some roots. Let let me put it up close. We also have beautiful green root tips. So this plant is really enjoying the setup still, luckily. And yeah, a lot of roots, still some roots. We have even some leftover ceramas in here. <laughs> I did give it something from almost everything that I have as it looks. But um, yeah, you can see beautiful root tips there as well. So yeah, I'm very, very happy. This is a beautiful site. This is what we want to see, obviously when we have our orchids, beautiful roots systems. So let me grab the tag, I should have a date on it. And I don't have a date on it. I normally always put a date on it, so I can uh, see when I did uh, up part it, this one in this uh, section, but I have to look it up. If I did, if I uh, could find it in my notes, I will have it uh, pop up now, so uh, you know, uh, but I know now how long I have this one, but I think it's, about a year, probably even less than that. I'm not completely sure from the top of my head, but I don't have it that long. That's what I'm trying to say here. <laughs> so what I do now, I do this every three months. We have the residue and we have um, the reservoir, I'm sorry. Here we're filled with water and I use different um, fertilizers and different uh, Supplements, so that's what you see. It's not a very clear water, but it's there are different things in there If you want to know more about that, I, I have a video on the, my fertilizing uh, products, etc. on my uh, channel as well If I don't forget, I will put it in in the link, but sometimes I forget the links. I, I apologize for that, but it's it's on my channel So this is a pH meter. Let's start uh, pHing this Measure the pH and see if we need to adjust it if this one yeah, wants to work. And while well, this one is uh, working on the uh, pH, measuring the pH, I grab my parts per million meter because the pH meter do take, uh, does take a little bit longer to get a good clean reading. I will put it on hold. Wrong button again. But in the meantime, I uh, do measure the parts per million. So we the pH meter can uh, stabilize a little bit more. So, how much parts per million do we have? As, I'm sorry for the glare, 93 as you can see. That's beautiful. Why is that beautiful? You may ask. Um, this is beautiful because I fertilize around somewhere uh, in between 80 to 150 parts per million per watering uh, in summer. Well, actually two to three waterings. Then I uh, sometimes use plain oral water. I only adjusted the pH to uh, freshen the pot up a little bit. And then I go uh, back to around 100 parts per million. So this one has a 93. That means that this one is eating and drinking. And uh, that's uh, quite likely because of the root system. It's still working on the root system. It's still working on these new leaves. So it's still in the growing mode. And it really uh, responds well to, uh, to the fertilizers. 
So let's see the pH. If it isn't way too low, and it isn't, luckily. We have a beautiful pH, I'm sorry again for the glare, I hope you can see this, 6.15. So let's say 6.2, something uh, around that. And I flush this right away, so I can put it into the lid again. So I can use it for the other targets when needed, but um, it's a beautiful pH. And a beautiful measurement for the parts per million. If the pH was too low, I use my calcium solution, my dol dolomite calcium powdery stuff. I put it in there to pH it up uh, to around 7, 7.5. And then it's uh, good to go for another three months. So let's put the Arca back into its outer container. Slowly. Yes, here we go. And uh, I will put it back in the uh, greenhouse and we will have a last look and talk about uh, this beautiful orchid. So while I was putting this orchid back, I noticed that this one is also working on a new leaf, as you can see there. It's a new leaf, it's also working on, on this leaf still. So yeah, it's, um, it's very obvious that this one needs this uh, fertilizer. And uh, not only the roots, like we did discuss, but also it's working on its, uh, its leaves. It's getting bigger. So that's nice. Maybe one day it will bloom for me. But um, yeah, that's just how I like to grow my orchids. I uh, basically try to grow all my orchids there, for an exception for my Vendacious types. I have those in uh, terracotta pots as I have my Tolumnias. But the rest is in self-watering. And I only have a one uh, Angraecum. Um, I like them, but not as much as, for example, as a, a wrinkle stylus. So I'd like to have a few more of those uh, instead of uh, engraecums taking up more space. So therefore, I only have one. And if I'm correct, this one has green, yellowish uh, blooms, and that's my preferred color um, in comparison to white. Most of them have have something, some white blooms, if I'm correct. Maybe there are some more different colors there, but I don't think there are much differentiations uh, in the blooms there with the engraecums. But anyhow, so this is a, bit, a little bit of this system that I have going on. Uh, I don't see the point for me in this system. I'm not saying it's not working, for others it's working, but for me, I don't see the point in get, giving this even more fertilizer than let's say the, the 100 to 150 parts per million. Because if this orchid needed more, in my opinion, it probably had a lower reading by now, parts per million wise. So, I can give it more, but if it doesn't need any more, it's only going to um, get salt built up, getting in the way from new root tips. So I like to have it on a low side. I don't think most orchids need that much feed. They need it on a, a weekly basis, every week in my case. In, if, if, in my opinion, I should say. So therefore, I uh, keep um, yeah keep a fairly low dosage of fertilizer, but I I give them them it uh, every week, and I try to give them a quite a menu. So if you want to check out, uh, look up that video where I do talk about the products that I use. I have different kinds of products in there, uh, from everything like I said, a little teeny tiny bit. So I basically give it a buffet, and I the orchid can choose for itself what it needs at this moment. That's basically my thought process um, behind that. So this is my Angraecum. Um, I try to cover everything that I know about this plant, that I uh, and I especially like to refer to my uh, my own experience with this this orchid. There's some inf information, and I like uh, the other growers who put it in put it in the information, the backgrounds of this orchid. Um, but I uh, give only my my care because I think you can look it up fairly easily. Once again, I really like it, don't get me wrong, but I uh, like to give you the information, the, the experience. Personally, I really, really enjoy watching videos where uh, growers give their personal experience about the orchids and try to explain it as uh, well as they can. So I, this was my attempt to explaining it as well as I can. If you still have any questions or comments, 
or whatever, <laughs> please leave them in the comment section below. I really enjoy it. And for the new subscribers, thank you so much. Highly appreciate it. And for, if you are, were already subscribed to my channel as well, a really big thank you. Um, well, yeah, this is it for now. I uh, can only hope to see you at one of my uh, next uh, videos. And I can uh, also, of course, uh, want to wish you a very nice day and hope to see you, uh, like I said, at the next uh, video. Bye-bye.